Fictional. Now we are halfway through season one, which means we decided it was time to shake things up a little bit here on the set. As you can see, I'm sitting on my butt, which is nice and comfortable for me. It makes it a little more relaxed, a little more chatty. Also, we've added a few more books and stuff, but you won't even notice that, it's fine. But most importantly, I wanna get you guys more involved. You've been great about suggesting topics in the YouTube comments and on Twitter and on Facebook and on Google+, but I want you even more intimately involved with the fact or fictional process. So from now on, when we have interviews, and if we know what the subject matter is and who's coming on the show, you guys are going to submit some questions. I don't really care how you do it. You can post in the comments. You can send me a tweet at Veronica. But we want you to be super involved. Your specific questions to our guests to make it more, you know, a conversation between you and the people that we get to have here on the show. Plus, if you're involved, that means I get to send you swag. Stickers, t-shirts, little stuff that I find around the office, I will send your way. So this week, I knew we were going to talk to the guys from Oculus while they were here at GDC showing off the Rift device, which of course, if you've been paying attention at all to the gaming world, it is like this amazing virtual reality headset that you wear and you are suddenly completely immersed in the games. But I wanted to know what you guys thought about it. Uh, William Bryan said, I'll stick a thing on my head, that's good to know, uh, but I think we'd all just like to plug in and pretend we have a cartoon body in an immersive environment. My hope and dream is that it can become a means to allow us to compress time, experience and digest things at a quicker pace, and in some cases, experience higher lights again. If for no other reason, then it might prevent us from allowing the haze of age to give everything a rosy or dismal hue. Well, that kind of went dark at the very end there, Will, uh, but I like where you're going with it. And then Kimmo said, VR will be amazing when we get to the point where we can seriously and directly interface our brains with computers. I'm totally with you there. I .e. replace eyes, ears, and other senses by hooking straight into the brain. Instead of just seeing Luke Skywalker flying an X-Wing, you could literally do it. Well, that or have sex with a simaculum of anyone living or dead in your head. Okay, got a little creepy there. Um, but of course, such tech would also come with serious drawbacks. Who would want to live in the real world if you can live in your own fantasy, in the body of Superman, if you so wish? I totally get what you're saying, Kimmo. I, if, if I had my very own holodeck, I think I would probably live in that for the rest of the time. You need an incentive to get back out into the real world. But I wanted to ask the guys from Oculus these very questions, so we headed over to GDC to sit down with them and learn more about virtual reality. You guys are like the buzz at GDC this year, the buzz this year in general probably. Tell me a little bit about Oculus Rift and how it works. Uh, so the Oculus Rift is a virtual reality headset with a wide field view and low latency head tracking that's designed to put you inside of the game. Mm -hmm. um, we were designing it uh, to be based on cheap hardware that can also provide a great experience, and we're building a software development kit so that it's easy for game developers to build experiences for virtual reality without having to get into the nitty gritty technical details themselves. So what are some of the inspirations for this device? Is this like you, you had, you know, you were a huge fan of the holodeck as a kid and you were like, this is what I want to create, or was it something else? It's not even any one individual thing, it's just virtual reality is pervasive in, in games, in books, in movies, I mean, The Matrix, you know, the, the, the Star Trek holodeck, um, Snow Crash is a great book that, you know, deals with virtual reality. Um, I think it's something that beyond any one particular piece of media, it's something that a lot of people have wanted for a very long time. Now, what goes into creating a 3D world? Because obviously we've, we've gotten to the point now where 2D worlds in, in video games and, and in film and media are, are incredibly intricate, but actually going into that space and having like a 360 degree situation, that's a whole, that's like next level. You'd, you'd actually be surprised. I mean, games that are in 2D, they're, all, they're still rendered in three dimensions. All of the data is actually there. Um, all you have to do to actually get that 3D view is render two cameras, one for each eye, and then display them properly. Um, so a lot of these 2D worlds that have been created in games, they're actually poured over to VR very easily. It's not necessarily a challenge of creating new worlds. It's a challenge of making those worlds work well in virtual reality by tweaking gameplay. What do you think are some of the next generation of, of input devices like that? Is it like a giant hamster ball where someone's the enclosed virtues. in a circle and they're just like paddling along, walking? People have made things like that. There's yeah. the virtue sphere. Uh, I mean, there's all kinds of different peripherals for virtual reality. Potentially, there's locomotion devices. There's a lot of people working on those. Basically, they're omnidirectional treadmills that allow you to walk in any direction. There's people working on gun controllers, hand controllers, body controllers. Uh, and we're researching all of those things ourselves, too. So 
we don't know exactly where we're going to end up, but it's going to be a lot different than what we have today. And, and my perspective is kind of, as long as I feel immersed in a universe, it doesn't necessarily need to be the kind of universe that we are in right now. It yeah, could be a more cartoony, 8-bit kind of experience. That's absolutely true. But, you know, 8-bit games work well on a screen, but you want more pixels than that on, on a virtual reality device. So where we are right now is just the beginning. We're going to get much better. Um, and I think that we can have a very convincing experience very quickly. How many steps away do you think we are from a holodeck? A lot of steps. A lot of steps. A lot of steps. What would you add to make it more holodeck-like if you could? The main problem with the holodeck is that it does not require any external equipment. Um, it also doesn't allow you to tap into, the, into someone's nervous system, so you really actually have to physically create everything in it. An actual holodeck is not the best way to do virtual reality. The best way would be a, like the Matrix, some kind of brain implant that allowed you to bypass your, you know, bypass your, your nervous system and you know, put input directly into your brain and then feed right back out of it. Um, one of the hardest problems for VR is to make things feel like they're real so that you actually have force exerted when you touch something. Motion tracking is easy, but what happens when you want to push up against a wall with motion tracking and there's no wall there? Mm -hmm. That's a problem that hasn't been solved. And finally, what do you see as the future of virtual reality within our lifetime? Within our lifetime? That's so hard. That's so many years to try and predict. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're going to hit the singularity. No way. I don't know. I'm one of <laughs> I'm one of those wackos. I, th I think I think it might happen, and that doesn't even mean I, I would. You know, it doesn't even mean I want to transfer my consciousness. But I think that if we can get even halfway there, we're gonna have pretty good. VR. Yeah, you're my kind of you're my kind of wacko. Love All right. it. Thank you so much. So the game we were playing was called Hawken, as you, as many of you probably know, and it it really did give you a sense that you were in a 3D, 360 degree kind of environment. Um, you could look up and see like all the, you could see the sky, you could see the features below you when you were flying around, you could turn around and see the back of the mech. Um, and it gave you some physical responses. Like I actually still feel a little bit motion sick and this was like an hour ago that we did this interview. And that's gonna be one of the biggest problems going forward. Michael, our producer for example, sweated profusely during the test. Apparently, I'm sorry Michael, that is what happens when your ears and your eyes are not working together in the same space. So you're seeing something, your ears are hearing something different that is not completely compatible with what your eyes are seeing and so your brain kind of freaks out and then suddenly it, it spasses. So overall there's a lot of hurdles we have to get over. We saw some of these same issues as when we were being introduced to 3D in, in film and at home. Um, I have physical reactions to it. I get kind of queasy. I get kind of sick. Uh, I know a lot of people do as well. Um, but if you want a true immersive environment you have to fix that problem. I'm obviously not smart enough to know how to fix that problem. These guys are, are working on it. That being said, it looked amazing. I could not believe how cool it was. And it's getting great reviews across the board. As we mentioned, it's the dev kit right now. We'll be seeing a consumer version sometime in the future. And I think it's going to make huge leaps and bounds in the gaming industry. But overall, we are giving the holodeck a fictional. As Palmer said, there's a lot more that goes into it than just fooling your eyes into thinking that you're in a virtual virtual environment. Uh, but we're, we're kind of close. Like, I'm not saying that this kind of immersive technology is not possible because clearly it is. The combined technology that goes into it, you know, not just visually, but but your senses and your ability to move around in it and its its ability to totally trick your brain. I, I mean I think we're closer to a, a, a more of like a bio implant kind of thing, like he was saying, where you can kind of plug into the matrix and, and feel like you're in that environment because it is in your brain. You don't have to be walking around. Your brain is doing it for you. Um, but the whole being in a holodeck and being able to run and jump and fight and do all of those things, that, not so much. So remember how at the beginning of the episode I said I wanted your input. How about an episode on dragons, one of my favorite mythological beings? If I were to get a dragon expert or a lizard expert here on the show, what would you want to know? What would you want to know about dragons? I have so many questions. I'm sure you do as well. So follow me on social, at Veronica on Twitter. I'm Veronica on Facebook. I'm, on, I'm something on Google+. And of course, make sure you watch all new episodes of Factor Fictional here on Tech Feed every Friday. I'll see you guys next time.